Hello, everyone, and welcome to my talk on a phase transition in large network games. My name is Abhishek Shende, and this work is in collaboration with Deepan Shivasal and Sriram Vishwanath. Uh, I'm from University of Texas at Austin. So game theory is a powerful tool to model um, strategic interactions among competing agents. Uh, since the introduction of Nash equilibrium, there has been extensive work in using game theoretical models to understand or predict real world scenarios using strategic agents. So some of the big examples are, for example, in Asimoglu and Robinson's 2001 and one's work, they developed a theory of political transitions in a country by modeling it as a repeated game between the elites and the poor. Um, they show that under certain conditions, a society will transition between an authoritarian state versus democracy. And this has been observed in Argentina. Um, in Akerlof's 1967 work, Market of Lemons, where he posed a market of cars as an incomplete information game and showed that um, such a market could lead to having only bad cars in the market. And this is a phenomenon that is observed in the real world. So, so we see uh, many such scenarios in real world where uh, people are interacting on a network and where each agent is affected only by the actions of their neighbors. Um, in technology adoption, we see that when a user has to make a decision to adopt one of the technology. Um, so for example, like in dating app, uh, the more number of people who use a particular app, the bigger the dating pool is, and then thus more people using that app makes that app better for a particular individual. Um, this is an example of a game with um, strategic complements. Uh, this is also seen in the Apple versus Android. If a group, if your friends are using uh, Apple products more than you would tend to get an Apple product rather than an Android. Um, in traffic congestion uh, example, we see something opposite. So suppose a person has to make a decision if they want to use a road uh, on a network. And the less people there are on a road, then the, it is more advantageous for that person. So this is an example of a network game with strategic substitutes. Um, we see uh, opinion in opinion dynamics that the choices of your friends, colleagues, or peers within your network can inform political opinion or uh, swing who you would decide to vote for. So such examples and uh, from the real world are studied as part of network games um, that involve strategic decision making and then networks of relationships. Uh, this has been surveyed extensively by Matt Jackson and Ballester in their papers. Um, so then we ask the question, um, how do such network effects play a role in um, various phenomena observed in our society? Uh, for example, we observe something called tipping points where a transition is triggered by some critical points. For example, uh, during the Christmas season, it is a tipping point for increase in flu transmission rates due to um, crowded shopping, crowded Christmas shopping and cold weather. Uh, we see uh, effects in social media where social media influencers with the law, with loyal and huge follower base can sway the society's opinions. We have now observed a uh, Black Lives Matter movement, which has now become a worldwide movement, but can be traced back to a few specific events in the US. Um, during the 2016 United States elections, we saw a view, uh, op opinion polarization where um, opinions or political opinions of people were um, were, were, were affected by uh, certain events. So is there a mathematical way to understand and predict such macro phenomena at the society level using strategic interaction of people at the micro level? Uh, we take our motivation from um, statistical physics. So in statistical physics, um, 
physicists have studied interaction of molecules at micro level to predict phenomena such as phase transition at mic macro level. So the phase transition between water and steam is an example where um, at a critical temperature, the density changes substantially. Uh, such phase transitions are studied using Ising models on random graphs. And uh, for our games on large networks, we also use random matrices as well. So looking at the survey of network, uh, literature of network games, uh, the focus has been on understanding the effect of properties of network on Nash equilibrium. So the results in Asu's paper uh, and Paris paper and uh, Ballester's paper, we see that um, the properties of Nash equilibria relate to the spectral radius or the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the adjacency matrix of the network. One of the most commonly studied examples in network games is using a linear quadratic game where the best response and the utility function is a linear function, linear quadratic function. Um, from the ra random matrix uh, literature, we have seen that the work of authors in um, uh, in bike uh, where they uh, show that the extreme eigenvalues undergo of a BBP phase transition where the which changes with the strength of deformation of this random matrix. Um, one of the biggest works in by Benyak Georges and Nara Kutiti in this space is that the phase transition of eigenvectors in large random matrices can undergo a, um, uh, undergoes over a critical point for additive and multiplicative perturbations of Wigner and Wissard matrices, respectively. So uh, we believe that our work is one of the first that brings this phase transition seen in statistical physics and applies it to the real world networks through random matrix and using game theory. Um, we think that this work can lead to some systematic study of phase transitions in large games. <laughs> we now set up our uh, game uh, and uh, define a few uh, network game related components. Uh, network game with n players uh, where the interaction is given by the adjacency matrix G and each player I uh, choose, chooses a strategy to maximize their utility function. This is a linear quadratic utility function which is dependent on their own strategy as well as their neighbor's strategy. The Nash equilibrium is defined as the strategies where uh, where which which maximizes their utility um, over all the other strategies. <clears throat> For LQ game, um, this Nash equilibrium can be derived using first order necessary conditions to maximize this utility function, um, which 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 has been derived and as shown here. Uh, we make a few assumptions over this LQ game uh, so that. Uh, we see that the Nash equilibrium X star can be uh, interpreted as the eigenvector of the adjacency matrix G, uh, which corresponds to the maximum eigenvalue lambda max. This helps us to make a connection between um, eigen, eigenvector, eigenvalue, and the Nash equilibrium and connect it to the random matrix um, theories. So let's look at an additive perturbation in our LQ game. Um, let, uh, so we see that X uh, is a Gaussian Wigner matrix, and it is known and shown that uh, the spectral measure of X, uh, the eigenvalues, uh, 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 converges to the uh, well-known semicircle distribution uh, with the density as shown here. And then the extreme eigenvalues, the maximum and minimum, converge to this endpoint of the support, which is uh, two sigma. Um, our perturbation matrix P uh, is a symmetric matrix with rank R, and its eigenvalues um, are distributed as shown here. 
so from the random matrix uh, theory and random matrix paper by Banyak Georges, uh, we have a phase transition theorem where um, as n tends to infinity, that is for large matrices. Uh, if we, where we have an additive perturbation where x tilde is equal to x plus p, um, the maximum eigenvalue undergoes a change where uh, over where the theta one, which is the strength of the perturbation is above a critical point sigma, we have our maximum eigenvalue changes while below that um, the maximum eigenvalue stays the same. Um, we, we simplify this a bit to, uh, to, to use perturbations with rank one uh, so that we have the perturbation matrix as theta u, u transpose, and um, we see this uh, phase transition for the eigenvector as well, uh, where um, we have two different states uh, above and below this critical point of sigma for this eigenvector. Um, we visualize this phase transition here. Um, we see that um, uh, the histogram of the eigenvectors, uh, eigenvalues um, on the left side is within the semicircle distribution. So for the Wigner matrix, uh, we have um, the eigenvalues between, uh, within this red curve. Uh, on the right side, on application of uh, an additive perturbation, we see that the extreme eigenvalue moves out of the um, semicircle distribution. And this is the phase transition phenomena that is observed. Um, so how is this, uh, how can this be applied in an LQ game? So we can see that the matrix X um, and the matrix can be thought of as the uh, adjacency matrix of a large network between uh, modeling the interactions between different participants. Um, we see that um, uh, the, uh, the perturbation matrix leads to deviations in the impact, uh, impacting the interactions between different players. And as we have shown before, like the Nash equilibrium of this game uh, is the eigenvector corresponding to the maximum eigenvalue. Um, thus, due to additive perturbation, we can uh, observe that the Nash equilibrium is dependent on the parameter theta of the perturbation. Um, so below this threshold value, the Nash equilibrium does not change and does not depend on the strength, but above this uh, threshold value, the Nash equilibrium changes um, due to this phase transition. Uh, we, dis we, uh, we, show, we, we try to visualize this uh, using a numerical example uh, for a Wigner matrix with n equal to 2000. Um, uh, we, we plot uh, the theoretical curve as shown from the uh, uh, from the uh, theoretical value from the phase transition theorem, and then calculate the Nash equilibrium numerically, which is the just the leading eigenvector, and uh, for two different critical values. Here, as we can see, that um, below and above this critical value, um, the Nash equilibrium shifts uh, and starts uh, displaying this phase transition. Um, here, uh, there's a bit of difference between numerical and theoretical since uh, these results are valid for the range of n tending to infinity. Another type of perturbation that we look at is the multiplicative perturbation. Um, so for a Wishart matrix, uh, we have um, the eigenvectors, uh, eigenvalues correspond to the marchenko pastor distribution with the density as shown here. And again, very similarly, uh, the extreme eigenvalues corresponds to the endpoints of this support. Um, uh, taking the similar perturbation matrix, um, our multiplicative perturbation is defined as x tilde is equal to x times i plus p. Um, and so we see the phase transition where if the strength of the perturbation is above a critical value. Again, we have a difference uh, in the uh, maximum eigenvalue. Um, we simplify this to use a specific perturbation type with just a single uh, rank one matrix. And uh, we see that the eigen, eigenvectors also display this phase transition. 
so in LQ game, uh, again, if we consider this X uh, as the West Hart matrix to be the um, to be the to rep to represent the network of people, um, and then the edges, and then the perturbation, uh, which which changes some of the interactions within this network. Uh, we could think of the Nash equilibria, uh, which is the eigenvector of the maximum eigenvalue, um, is dependent on um, the strength of the perturbation. And uh, below this critical strength, uh, the Nash equilibrium remains unaffected. But above this critical strength, the Nash equilibrium can be uh, can be modified and can be changed. <clears throat> uh, we we again uh, visualize this using a numerical example um, with uh, two different critical points. Um, we, we, the value of um, the norm of u tilde and u is a theoretical curve as defined from the, um, from, from the theorem. And then the numerical value is computationally calculating the Nash equilibrium for this random matrix. Uh, we observe a similar phase transition as seen in the additive. Uh, perturbation, um, the two curves, um, the Nash equilibria um, shifts significantly as soon as it crosses uh, or is close to the critical point. Um, this is, um, uh, these two curves um, have been, uh, uh, show, show, the, show this phase transition phenomenon. So for our discussion, we see we try to uh, conclude using our displayed results. Um, the Nash equilibria for this uh, specific linear quadratic game uh, you can see that it can be affected through additive and multiplicative perturbation. When the perturbation strength is strong enough, the primary eigenvalue goes beyond the random spectrum, uh, and this this affects the Nash equilibria. Um, the finite track perturbation of an adjacency matrix of a large network can be interpreted in multiple ways. Um, the additive perturbation can be defined such that the specific nodes of a network have higher influence um, through their edges on the neighbors and consequently the entire network. The multiplicative perturbation is a bit uh, difficult to visualize, but uh, there can be some work there to, done there to analyze what that would mean. So using an analysis, uh, we see that we can apply sufficient external modifications to a network targeting an influential set of individuals to trigger a large cascade of video spread. <clears throat> um, we hope that this opens up a bigger picture of combining random matrix theory and network games even outside of LQ games and apply it to some uh, different uh, network game models. These are a few references um, that we have used for our work. Uh, thank you.